Let's take a look at working with tapered strokes inside of After Effects 2020. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart. Today we're taking a look at the tapered strokes uh, effect inside of After Effects 2020. This is new to After Effects 2020 and it's very cool. Uh, let's jump right in with creating a new composition. Let's make it 1920 by 1080. And I just want to apologize first of all for not having a webcam on this one. It's filmed during the coronavirus epidemic and there's no room to set up any of that stuff. Uh, hopefully you won't need it to follow along though because it's quite a quick tutorial. Let's create a new background. I'm just going to go to my previous one here and grab this dark gray solid with a gradient effect that I've applied to it, just to make things a bit quicker and easier for you guys to see. Uh, four seconds as well is going to be fine. Let's trim the comp to that work area. Let's create then our first stroke. Now you need a nice thick stroke for this one. I'm going to say about 280 pixels in this composition is fine. And I'm just going to start by creating nice wavy seaweedish shape. You can take your selection tool and tweak these uh, positions until you're happy with them. For example, I'm just going to drag that one down a bit lower, like so. And I think that looks pretty good. So we'll take that. Now, all of the settings for this new tapered effect are inside your stroke panel. So if you go down to your shape layer, we'll just call this one seaweed. You can twirl this down to contents, shape one, stroke one. Now inside here, you've got a new option called taper. So let's twirl that down and take a look at what's inside it. There's three options. There's length, width, and ease, and there's a start and end position for each. It works quite similar to trim paths. The start length will affect how long the taper is from the start point of the line. The end length will affect the same from the end. So we're gonna drag that all the way up to 100. You've then got start and end width which obviously affects the um, width of the finishing point or the starting point. So zero would be a completely sharp point. 100 would be no taper at all. So I'm going to take that back down to zero. And you've got the ease, which basically affects, much like the rest of the easing in After Effects, how quickly that effect comes on. So the larger this is, the more poofy and round your end point is. So for something like this piece of seaweed, I'd suggest around 45 or so works pretty well. That's the basics of working with the strokes, but you probably want to see this animated. So let's add a trim paths to that. Go down to your trim paths, take your endpoint, take it to zero. And you can see that all of these effects are applied live, i.e. it's generated as your stroke is animated, which is really, really useful. I'm going to hit F9 to add a bit of easing to that. Press U to collapse all of this down to just the keyframe and take a look. Bam, looks pretty good. Now you'll notice that we've got some small shapes cutting off here, and that's because our stroke is so thick. It's as the um, roundness of that turns back on itself, you get a little bit of a crossover. You can fix that by tweaking some of your points. Uh, for example, if I were to select, uh, oh, excuse me, it's always so hard to actually select a single point in After Effects, I hate it. Maybe if you go to the pen tool, is that gonna be a little bit easier? There we go. Um, for example, you can see that if I bring this point down, that then corrects itself, but it creates a new one there. Uh, it just depends on the style that you're going for more than anything else, really. Um, I'm not particularly bothered by it. If you are, continue to tweak. Uh, let's duplicate this layer uh, and I'll show you something cool. Obviously, all of this is generated completely procedurally. So if we were to take, for example, let's just eyedropper this dark corner down here and I was to adjust the width of my stroke, it's going to still keep all of the tapering, roundness, easing, etc., that we applied to the larger value onto this smaller value as well. So all of that stuff is procedurally generated and all of it is easily corrected and applied to different things. So there you go, we see we've got our um, stroke here with our taper applied to it. If I just put the vein layer a little bit backwards and we've got now our growing seaweed. Obviously, all I did for this other one is to duplicate that a few times, uh, hide it behind each other, scale it down a little bit, maybe pre-compose those two shape layers, and you're good to go. That's really all there is to it. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. A nice, simple tutorial, but as you can see, really powerful for larger projects. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time on another episode of Tip Top. Tip Top.